Hey guys, this video is going to be a brief draft analysis of my team, Fart Studios, featuring me, Sonic, Annihilate, Jenkins, as well as Nusham and our run through the open qualifiers, giving you a brief insight into the way we think about picking heroes and generally the way I like to draft in a competitive environment with some cool tips and tricks if you guys want to play captain's mode or just things to consider when you're thinking about counter matchups and making sure that you don't get outdrafted in your regular pubs. So I am drafting for this team, and uh, first and foremost, we got our first game of the second open qualifiers, and in this game, we are Radiant. And so I want to lead off by saying the first round bans are kind of irrelevant. They're just targeted towards the team that we saw. But in the qualifiers, especially in pubs, it's really important to kind of do your own thing. So don't focus too much on what the opponent's trying to do. Make sure you can deal with what they're trying to do because your lineup is well-rounded and covers itself. So let's go and get started. Banana slam jam. Whenever you're drafting in captain's mode, it's different to draft with first pick than it is to draft with second pick. So right now we're second pick and we're gonna highlight crucial parts of second pick throughout the course of this video because we got second pick every single game. So when it comes to second pick, you wanna have a strong duo opening. Whatever the duo you pick, since you have two picks in a row, you want them to have strong synergy, whether it's a lane, whether it's in game, like some combo like Void Invoker or a lane duo like this being Tiny Nature's Prophet. Every team should have signature openings. This is something you very commonly see at TI, teams will generally pick the exact same heroes in the first round throughout the course of a patch. The reason why reliable openers are so important is because there's so many different ways that a draft can go, and there's so many different things that can go wrong throughout the course of the draft that learning to cover those bases and making sure that you're prepared for it is really important, and every single opening duo that you pick has weaknesses that you have to have experience before. Meaning like, if you try a different opening next game, you're gonna run into different problems potentially than you would picking the same opening every game. So it's a bit of familiarity and there's a lot of like expertise on the two heroes you're picking. So the earlier picks are heroes that you consider reliable. If possible, you want them to be flex picks like a hero like Tiny that can be played four position and two position. And also just generally heroes that you feel very comfortable on against most matchups. Earlier on in the draft, those are the focuses. The later on the draft, you're more concerned about rounding out the draft, so you're affected by the earlier heroes that you've picked, but also potentially countering more heroes in the opponent draft because you've seen more information about what they're picking. So what Tiny Nature's Prophet offers is a nice lane duo, potential flex of the Tiny, and a lot of early game tower pressure, lane pressure, because it's just a very hard lane for a carry to deal with, as I can tell you myself. So they respond with a lane duo of their own most likely, Marana plus Beastmaster. And something that I see with this duo whenever you look at this is what heroes pair well with it and what type of tempo goes with it. So the thing about Beastmaster, similar to Nature's Prophet, is he's a summon hero that's going to apply a lot of pressure on our tower. So because we have no heroes right now that are very good at defending towers, I immediately consider that and I also immediately consider what types of heroes like to have Beastmaster. So Beastmaster is going to buy the Helm of the Overlord with the Vlad's aura and heroes that benefit from attack speed. So generally speaking, heroes that synergize with Beastmaster the best are heroes that allow Beastmaster to sit behind them as they stand still right-clicking. So what does that mean? Long-range right-clickers. So in this case, because we don't have too many stuns in our offlaner, is going to be stunless. I choose to ban three ranged carries that synergize well with Beastmaster. So the bans, generally as second pick, are to block the opponent from getting reliable strats with what they currently have. Because if we look at the second round of picks, it's us, then them picking twice, and then us again. So they have to pick heroes here that don't mind getting countered here. Then they get a pick and then they get countered again. So when they are picking, they're more concerned about making sure their lineup is well-rounded rather than picking heroes that are like cheesy or like not countered. So as long as we're prepared for the optimal strategy that they would run in terms of hero synergy, we'll be ready to counter whatever they throw out. So we fan out their synergy, and then we want to immediately address the pressure of the Beastmaster by picking a five that slows the attack speed of all the summons and also can defend the tower because of dual breath. And even in uh, more urgent scenarios, he could use Macropire. So at this point, we have a lot of options with what we could pick. So the opponent doesn't have a lot of stuns. They kind of have one combo. They have Beastmaster Roar into Marana Arrow or Ember Chains into Marana Arrow. That's their only reliable way 
to lock down any carry. So whenever I'm picking carries, I like to think of counter matchups and I also like to think of what items they buy. So against Beastmaster, if I use Manta Illusions or Illusions in general to push waves, he no longer threatens that hero. If I Manta off Searing Chains, then the arrow plus chains combo is no longer there. So because of that sheer fact, I would choose an Illusion hero here. And based on my preference with the heroes that we currently have, I feel like there's not really enough farm space on the map for Naga because she just consumes the entire map herself. I would took it down a notch and went for Terror Blade. So the reason why I chose Terror Blade over PL, for instance, is because PL tends to struggle against early lane pressure and getting rotated on by the opponent mid. While Terror Blade tends to do a better job of using Metamorphosis and actually kind of bullying the offlaner away. And since Beastmaster is actually really weak level one and two, picking a carry like Terror Blade that has a really good level two timing matches up quite nicely against the Beastmaster. So now that I've picked Terror Blade, I have to now ban the counter carry matchups because that's what they have left. Don't give them a good carry matchup, especially heroes that are good against both our carry and our offlaner. Neither our carry or offlaner deals with illusion heroes. Neither of us have AoE damage. The only heroes we have to deal with illusions is our five position. And so even though we have a last pick, we don't want to put a massive burden. We don't want to like pigeonhole our last pick. We want to leave our last pick as open as possible. So we don't want them to pick a hero. We have absolutely nothing against so far. So I banned the Naga as well as the PL. Notice how they even banned the Leshrac. Looks like they wanted an illusion hero because Leshrac is so good against them. So they go for Troll Warlord. He's good against Nature's Prophet and Lane, high armor, mischance on the Trance. And he's also good against Terror Blade because of the mischance on all the illusions. So in this case, we are debating between Outworld Devourer and Viper. Both of these ranged heroes do really well against Ember and Lane. And also the break from Viper is very good against Troll. And the Astral and Prison from OD is insanely good against Troll as well to cancel out his ultimate and also save people who get gone on. During the game itself, I didn't think I needed to be saved because I was Terror Blade, like a pretty self-sufficient carry. So we elected to go for the more lane domination route with Viper. Kind of backfired a bit because later on I got bursted. But know that we kind of went for the lane play. Viper shits on Ember in lane over the late game save place. So we had two choices to go for in the last pick. And we opted to go for lane dominance over the mid to late game counter of the Troll Warlord. So game two, we're against a new team. And this time around, we're going to be Dire, second pick once again. And we have our Nature's Prophet banned out. So because they banned one of the two heroes in our crucial opening, we have to open differently. So instead of opening a strong laning duo necessarily, we're going the Tundra Strat from TI-11 and having a nice kill combo to open up our draft which is going to be the Tiny plus the Marana. So this is potentially a lane duo with three position Tiny, four position Marana, and it's also potentially a Tiny mid, and it's also potentially a Marana five. So it's not only a flex pick, but it also a strong combo that could lane together. So there's a lot of versatility and combo power going on with our opening once again. So this time around, it wasn't quite as clear to what to ban in the second round, because what I see from them is a burst combo duo, similar to ours. It could be a lane combo, could be four tusk, three hoodwink, because Lukey Lukey plays Hoodwink. It could be Hoodwink 4, Tusk 3. It could be Tusk mid, Hoodwink 4. So like, all I see is Burst. That's really all I see. That's all I know that I'm going to be dealing with. And there's really no like game plan that they're representing like last time with the Beastmaster. So in terms of bands, it's more just about what combos what we currently have and what I know they currently play in the offlane. So Burst combo plus Legion is also really strong and she can remove the arrow from Marana. And then we band out a carry that's really hard for this duo to reliably combo. Lifestealer. And then we also banned out Terror Blade. Similar idea to what I said last game is there's like this kill combo. Illusion heroes tend to do well against it, especially the Marana arrow combos because it's hard to arrow through a bunch of illusions. Also, Terror Blade beefs up with his items, gets comboed down to half HP or less from Tiny. Sunders comes back. So I tend to like that matchup as well. And we go for a support that defends the tower. Similar idea to the Jakiro um, against the Beastmaster pressure, but this time it's because we want a support that can be as far away out of vision as possible. And also it's a hero that Sonic really likes to play. The reason why I say this is because this combo doesn't represent much tower pressure, but it makes it so as a carry, I never want to lane past like level five or six. I don't want to lane against these guys. Pretty much every carry in the game just gets comboed full to zero playing against this. So I don't want to lane very long. So I pick a support that's going to happily take over the lane. They have a lot of low cooldown fighting and they want to reliably burst somebody at the start. So I want somebody who basically buys an early BKB and stands their ground. That's what I want from this because tag team doesn't go through BKB. None of Hoodwing's spells go through BKB. Most of Ember's damage doesn't go through BKB. 
Same with Silencer. So we saw an opportunity to just pick like a BKB mid. Since we don't see the carry matchup yet, we already see the mid. At this point, you can either pick your carry or your mid, but since they've revealed their mid lane matchup, we chose to go for the mid lane. BKB hero, Lena, boom, works out perfectly. Also lanes pretty well against Ember. Um, in this case, because we're gonna have Lena standing her ground and they have a lot of heavy commitment heroes, like Tusk has to go in, Ember has to go in, they're gonna commit with the Silencer Global. We didn't want them to be able to kill the Lena without committing. So long range carries getting banned again. Sniper as well as the Drow. They go for Clinks. Spoiler alert, you see what I'm gonna pick, but they go for Clinks. Um, I didn't really like their pick all that much because he does suffer against Tiny Avalanche when it comes to dishing out his damage and also can get comboed down by Tiny Marana. So they picked a hero that dies to the combo we started the draft with, which I wasn't a huge fan of. And because even though they have Ember Spirit, these two heroes have disjointable stuns. A hero that builds Manta against Silencer. And even though Clinks builds Glightning, if I Manta and Doppel his Q, he does literally no damage. Clink suffers a lot against illusion heroes that can get on top of him, which is specifically like Naga and PL. So I felt like it was a pretty free game. And I mentioned that I also wanted to be a hero that left lane. PL has a very clear timing to leave lane at level six. I didn't feel like there was going to be any tower pressure. So if we compare the previous game where I picked Terrorblade as opposed to PL, both games were good illusion games, but I was worried about losing my tower in the TB game. So I picked a hero that would help defend it in the PL game I just wanted to leave my lane I wasn't worried about the tower dying because now at this point I know they have a off lane tusk or hoodwink neither of which does significant tower damage so I knew I'd have time to farm it up and I also like the matchups going mid to late um end up being a pretty free PL game and even though we slipped up a little bit we won this one as well and playing against Lukey Lukey's team one more time so they've banned out the tiny and the nature's prophet both the heroes that we reliably open with so we have open a bit differently here. So in this case, we go for some other specialty heroes. The specialty hero that we opt to go for is Sonic's Magnus. He loves playing it. It's most likely gonna be his hero, the five position. And we were kind of debating, like I honestly hadn't rehearsed an opening for this. And then Nushim suggested that we pick him Rubik in order to cover the mag, because a lot of teams would like to pick Rubik against mag. So sometimes you can do that, where you have a hero that you like a lot that gets countered by something else. So you actually open with the two heroes, one of which counters the other, so that you're basically blocked picking the opponent so that's what we did in this game so right now i see their offlaner mars they've already opened up so the thing about mag almost the same idea as the other two games but when they have mars go in with arena i don't care if they follow it up with a melee hero because if they follow up the arena with a melee hero we have mag so they're gonna get rp'd so what we don't want is them to throw down the arena lock two or three of our guys in place and then have a carry sitting outside the arena hitting us because we have rp as our way to protect the carry to scare them from committing so we ban the drow the medusa same idea here and because i have a mag five i'm allowed to pick a carry earlier on in the draft because i basically have a free battle fury i'll be able to itemize more survivability and i'll have a lot more time to recover and the amount of space i have on the map is actually more affected by whether or not my other lanes go well than my own lane i'm not exactly expecting to win my lane because i have a mag five but i do expect to farm some stacks hit some jungle creeps and it's actually really important that my off laner and mid laner have better games so i prioritize their hero for later on in the draft. Also, I banned out the Naga because of the fact that I wanted to pick Faces Void. Very strong counter against the Chrono is the Song. Also, the Net's very good against you. I wanted a hero that benefits from Mag and Power, doesn't need to be babysat in lane like they have natural survivability, and they can reliably get away from Mars Arena. I don't wanna have to buy a BKB just for Mars Arena. So any hero with natural mobility, benefits from Cleave, doesn't need very much help in lane, like he'll survive on his own, boom, face is void. Other options are like PA for instance, but she's kind of bad this patch. So they go for a chrono save plus hero that doesn't mind getting chronoed in the Wraith King. But I already mentioned we have mags. So even though like chronosphere is nice and all, I'm a void with the ability to have a free battle fury. I can itemize more of that survivability void that I talked about in my void guide from eons ago. And I'm not too concerned about them countering my chronosphere as I don't have to necessarily itemize to burst people in it because of the fact that I'll have a lot more farm and I can skip the early farming items like Maelstrom and Battle Fury and go for more survivability items. So at this point, because they have kind of like countered my Chronosphere, we're not gonna worry too much about my Chronosphere, but we wanna pick a hero that just doesn't really die to their stuff. Delayed stun, projectile stun, projectile stun, and we want an offlaner that deals well with the Mars Arena also, if we could do it. 
Can we pick an off laner that gives us some team fight, lanes decently against Wraith King and can clear his skeletons, but can also just not die to these unreliable stuns? So what do we pick? We go for the Sand King, because even if he jumps into my Chronosphere with Sandstorm and Epicenter, he'll still be dishing out all of his damage. Burrow Strike away from the arena can uh, blink dodge and get away from all these other stuns. Very reliable, survivable hero on the map. Should be set up for a pretty decent lane and also synergizes well with the Faceless Void. So they ban out uh, Invoker, Combo, I'm not even sure why they banned Ember Spirit. We banned out threats outside of the Chronosphere. Heroes that would be a little bit odd for me to Chrono because they're really far back and maybe also hard for our team to catch. So we banned Puck because of the Venge swap out of Coil Synergy. And then Lina was the same idea as banning Medusa and Drow, but they need a mid laner now. So Lina's like the long range mid lane damage dealer. Same idea there. Because as of now, if I get gone on, I just have Sanking Burrow Strike and Mag RP for these two melee cores, right? Pretty hard for them to reliably burst me. They go through um they go for a third melee core, which I think is an even bigger mistake. And I annihilate, even though they have Venge to save from the lasso, just said the same thing of, you know, pick another hero that's hard for these unreliable stuns to catch. Batrider goes for an early BKB against like the Kunkka X and all that kind of stuff. And we just wanted an independent mid laner that would have a strong matchup. He liked the matchup a lot against Kunkka, and I emphasize as a carry that I didn't care as much about my lane. I cared more about the other two lanes. We had a pretty sick team fight game plan going already, so we just needed a hero with a good matchup that felt like he would have the ability to itemize properly and go in in team fights. So that's our drafts for open qualifier number two. We're playing more games for what you guys will be yesterday. Um, if you guys like this video a lot for any team content that I do do, this team is more of a chill team. We're not really scrimming, but we're all good friends just kind of doing our thing. Um, we are taking it seriously, but, you know, in the sense of, like, we go into these games trying our best. It's a lot of good content. You can see it on my stream, Jenkins' stream. I think pretty much everybody on the team is streaming, so check out their Twitch handles if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe, and definitely know, let me know in the comments how much you guys enjoyed this or not and if you'd like more in the future. Thanks, guys. Bye.